Hello, Internet, and welcome to my live reaction for To Your Eternity, Chapter 155.5. Uh, when we last left our heroes, we dealt with the fallout of uh, the Izumi Knocker and Mizaha's big fall. Um, as they're maybe both dead, there's this conversation that Fushi has with the Izumi Knocker, uh, where it seems to imply that the Izumi Knocker is just going to give up here and return to paradise, I think. Uh, and Fushi takes Mizaha's body out of the pit back to the main level of the throne room, where he's met by the knocker and Mizaha's father, who wants Mizaha's body back. And here's where things get a little weird, uh, because it seems like Fushi's at least acting like Mizaha's still alive. Despite the fact we have the whole thing in the last part of 154, uh, where we saw what I assumed was Mizaha's paradise, as I described it getting like overridden by, by Hayase's paradise. Um, but Fushi is still, like, telling the occult club to take the body to the hospital. Um, so, like, like maybe, maybe Mizaha is somehow alive, but also maybe Fushi is just not telling them that Mizaha is dead, and the reason he wants them to take Mizaha away is the knockers can't get the body. I'm not sure. There's also some kind of schism going on in the Guardians, um, where one side, led by Mizaha's father, wants to steal the body, uh, whereas one side that my Mizaha's grandfather doesn't want that, maybe they also believe Mizaha is somehow still alive and want Mizaha to be alive and not just be a vessel for the Guardian Knocker. It's all a little confusing, but the chapter ends with chaos in Knocker HQ as the occult club escapes uh, with Mizaha's body. Also, Fushi gets shot a bunch of times and seems to take some actual damage from that, which is kind of weird as he shouldn't really be affected too bad by that, but I don't know. Um, anyway... We open not with, um, not at Knocker HQ, but back with Tonari and the Funa gang. Where we last left them was, um, uh, Tonari making her whole, you know, six arrows together is stronger than one. Let's all work together to beat the puppet. As the puppet regenerated from, from getting burned, from getting, like, burned alive. Uh, and Tonari has this kind of horseshoe looking thing, uh, that she, like, lunges at um at the puppet ah and it seems to catch the puppet right around right around here-ish uh as nagisa i think is the red-haired one's name if i'm not mistaken uh yes nagisa i always get her and, and saki confused uh, but nagisa picks up this this desk and her funa and i think kasabe all throw it together die monster and it just hits him on the head. Uh, and he's a little bloodied up by that, but, you know, he's not really concerned. Uh, he lunges for Aiko. And Tonari grabs Aiko to pull her out of the way. Uh, and I think lunges her pull thing back at the puppet. And the puppet just, like, like in the puppet's mouth. And the puppet, like, bites into it. Um, but that ends up exploding, like, some kind of explosive on the end of that pull. Uh, and the puppet takes some damage. Chapter 155, Trusting Heart, Part 2. Uh, and as the puppet falls, Aiko calls, What the hell did you do? Uh, and Tonari tells everyone, This way, girls. Um, and then we see there's some kind of plan going on between Tonari and Aiko. Um, and Tonari whispers, Are you sure you want to do this? And Aiko tells her, Yes, I'll have it done in 10 minutes. Um, Kasabe calls in, Have what done? But Aiko just says, Come with me, ladies. This way. And be as quiet as possible. And we see... A bit of what was going on, like, like apparently sometime between the last time we checked in with them, um, somehow the puppet got in an opening in, like, the ceiling between rooms. So they're able, so they're now in the room, they were in the room with the puppet's face, now they're in the room with the puppet's back half. Um, and I guess it can't really sense them, as its eyes are, are in the other room. Uh, anyway, as, as they escape, Aiko tells them, I'm going to tell you what we need to defeat that thing. And then we'll split into two groups to find it. Uh, and Nagisa notes, hey, that Tonari girl isn't coming. Uh, but Aiko tells her, Tonari-san is going to buy us time in the second school building. And we see Tonari is saved behind to keep shooting explosive arrows at the puppet. Uh, as the puppet respawns and goes right back on the attack against Tonari. Um, and we have now... Mm, the puppet, like... Crawling on the wall after Tonari. Very kind of, kind of like Spider-Man-y almost. And Tonari thinks, that's it. Over here. And she grabs this like bucket of sand, it looks like. And throws it at the puppet. 
I'm not sure what kind of damage that does. Um, oh, but then... Okay, so I think what happens there is somehow that causes the sprinkler system to go off. Fire detected. Fire detected. And without the sprinklers, rain down, but it ends up burning the puppet. As Sean already says, ha ha, you like that? That's fire that burns in water. I'm not quite sure how she found fire that burns in water, but okay. Not quite sure how exactly any of this is working. Uh, but the puppet is a little, little in pain, but is mostly making it work. Uh, Tanari comments, yikes, you're really hanging in there. There's plenty more, and she has a whole bunch of, oh, like water balloons, I think, to make the, the, the fire keep on going. Where that came from, and she throws it, it actually might be more of the sand inside those balloons, maybe? I'm not sure, I'm trying to work out what exactly I'm looking at here. Um, but it hits the puppet right like right in the face and then I think it actually might just be water because the water it looks like it gets on the puppet's legs and it slips I think I'm not entirely sure what's going on here it's really kind of confusing uh, but the, the end result is puppet on fire I'm not sure how or why or really like even all of Tanari's explanations just don't make that much sense um, but the puppet's on fire is what we need to know uh, but, uh, it looks like someone, th doesn't look like the puppet. The puppet doesn't have those sleeves. Uh, but someone grabs Tonari and trips her. Uh, and Tonari looks back, no way! How did- And we see it's some random girl who's just, like, unconsciously grabbing onto Tonari's boots. Uh, as the puppet approaches, and she, like, tries to pull the girl off her. Oh, crap! Damn it! Let go! Please! Um, and she reaches over and she finds some of Fushi's roots. Okay. Um, Fushi's roots! Fushi! And she like calls to Fushi through the roots, I guess. Probably not knowing Fushi's at least a little disconnected from the roots. Do something about that thing! Fushi! And then we see this big ol' explosion. Um... And then this metal orb encases the puppet. Okay. I'm curious how that ties into, um, into Aiko's plan. I don't know. Um, but Tonari just looks up the iron prison from Renril. I've got to tell everyone we're safe now. Wait, the only Iron Prison I remember is when the Bennett Church arc, was a bit which was a bit before Renril. Unless there's a part of Renril I'm forgetting. I don't remember a lot of Renril. Renril is distinctly, like, not my favorite arc. Um, I just wasn't really into most of the plot of that whole segment of the story, to be honest. Um, so I might just be forgetting an important part of Renril. But anyway, Iron Prison that should keep uh, the puppet outside of any outside influence. But then a drop of water falls onto the prison. And Tanari looks up. Oh, and it's on the ceiling. It dodged the prison. It didn't work. Um, as Tanari is just stunned. Fire detected. Fire detected. And with that, the, the puppet jumps down um, from the ceiling. Tonari's rain boot slips off. That might be... Is that the leg that was caught by by the girl? I think so. Um, yeah. Uh, mm. No, no. That was like the, I'm trying to tell if that's the left leg or right leg that was caught by the girl. And I could see it being either one. The way um, Tonari's legs are, are positioned there. I can't really tell. Uh, but w either way, one of the boots is off, and those are the boots protecting her, protecting her from the knocker-infested water. Uh, which, again, could be bad. Could be an important thing. But she still is just, like, booking it through, through the school. It's okay, Fushi. And the puppet, you know, missing its head at this point. It's, like, falling apart. Uh, but still chasing after her. I can still fight. And that's where we leave off. That's how the chapter ends, uh, with the puppet just chasing after, after Tonari. Um, so yeah, there's not a whole lot of progress on display in this chapter. 
Um, it's, you know, there's some, some tension here. It's not quite as, like, the masterclass in tension we saw in earlier parts of the puppet chase. Um, there's a little bit too much confusion going on here for it to really work, which has generally been the problem of the, of the HQ subplot rather than the school bit in this, in this arc. Um, but, like, there's just some, some, like, I'm not sure, the, the closest thing I can think of to a fire that burns in water is, like, Greek fire, but I'm not sure, uh, like, don't, don't we not even know how they made Greek fire, right? Uh, am I remembering that properly? Like, as I recall, we don't know how... Yeah, there's, like, on the Wikipedia, it just says theories on composition. Like, we don't know how they made it, let alone having fucking high schools have the composition for Greek fire. I don't know. It's a little weird. Uh, but either way, the important thing is, Tanari is doing some damage, but it's not really affecting the puppet. Um, and you know, even, even some of Fuji's efforts, like subconscious summoning of the, the iron ball does nothing. That sort of is the ultimate, you know, all we really get out of this chapter is A, Aiko has some plan that'll maybe fix things and B, Tonari's fucked. <laughs> things are just getting worse and worse from her, for her. Um, I don't know. She, she's still determined to fight, but... Oh, shit, hold on. I just noticed that last panel. I missed that last panel. Um, I should have noticed that last panel immediately, because that's the important thing. The real important thing in this chapter is on that I can still fight panel. Below her right eye, there's a whole streak of blood. And if that came from the knocker, then Tonari's infected. And that's, that could be real bad. That could, I mean, sure, you know, at this point in eternity, all they would have to do in the long run to, like, save Tonari is kill this body and get Tonari a new body. But still, in the immediate short term, you know, the only real fighter on the human side in this conflict in the school is about to be turned, if I'm right. And I think I am right here. Uh, so that could be real bad. But that's a problem for next week. Um, cause that last panel kind of did change my, my opinion of the, of the chapter. That's a real horrifying little bit that like we barely even notice. Tanari has not noticed yet. Uh, but yeah, that could be real bad. Uh, but for now, we'll have to wait and see how all that turns out next time. So I'm going to leave this video off here. Hope you'll enjoy the chapter and the video itself. If you did, feel free to drop me a like or subscribe, you know, do whatever makes you happy, you know? And as always, your life is your own, okay? Bye!